Hi. Today I want to walk through a professional Git workflow, which is called uh, trunk-based development. Uh, this is, at least from my experience, one of the most common Git workflows that is used in professional teams. Um, you might not be familiar with all the terms, but uh, the only thing that you need is uh, basic Git knowledge, like uh, commits and branches, for example. Um, you can uh, watch me walk through the process here, but if you want to gain hands-on practice, you can also try out my uh, free course called GitHub Minesweeper, um, where you can uh, basically um, walk through the whole process uh, with the help of a bot. Um, yeah. So let me quickly explain how this works. Uh, trunk-based development, uh, this is actually called scaled trunk-based development. Um, as a, a solo dev, you're usually used to working on the main branch uh, or the master branch and in a team that often doesn't work out. Um, so uh, in a team, developers usually work on their own branches. Then to merge the branch, they uh, create a pull request on GitHub, or this is also called a merge request on GitLab, for example. Um, and then inside the pull request, the teammate will review the code. Then often there's a CI pipeline, continuous integration pipeline, that automatically uh, runs some checks like uh, linters or tests uh, on your code. And then finally, when the code is reviewed and approved by your teammate, then you merge it into the main branch. Um, yeah, I prepared already a demo repository here. This is an application for my upcoming uh, React Drop Simulator. Um, uh, this code is not really like production code yet. It's just like example code. We will uh, work on this in later videos. But you can see that I already created some changes here. Um, basically, this is just a migration from normal CSS code to uh, style components. As you can see, I'm here on the main branch. So as I said, in a real developer team, we wouldn't directly commit to the main branch. This would get quite chaotic uh, with uh, multiple contributors. Instead, we would use our own branch to implement the feature. So uh, let me check out a new branch here, minus B, um, and then a name, migrate to state components, for example. So now we have a new branch. Now let me check. I will create two commits. I will use the VS Code um, source control panel here. Uh, so these changes are just like migrating the home page to style components. So migrate home page to style components and then the next step will be uh, so here we removed a set of classes that are not used anymore in the normal CSS file so uh, let me call this remove unused CSS classes okay so the next step is that we push the branch either via this uh, publish branch button or we do push origin and then migrate style components okay so now we can open a pull request either via via this link or if we check our branch here uh, our github repository you will see that there's a button uh, so we can create a pull request here can add a short description, migrates the home page to styled components. And now we can create the pull request. So now you can see that uh, I already have some continuous integration pipeline here in place. Uh, this is pretty common. It will run some tests 
for example, the Linter, Prettier, and uh, Cypress tests. Um, and then if it passes, uh, this will turn into a green check. Um, we will cover this in a second video, but for now, let's continue with the workflow. Um, so here you can see the list of commits and the checks. This is basically what's running now, the CI pipeline. And then you have a detailed list of uh, changes here. Um, yeah, and here, as you can see, it's uh, the reviewers part. I have a like a fake um, teammate here in place. So uh, what we would do now in a real team would be to request a review from our teammate. So now this is it for now on the on my part on the part of the um, author of the pull request now it's time for our teammate to uh, review the code so let's do that uh, i already prepared a second account here so this is uh, our teammate and let's see how, how it looks like from this perspective so here's the pull request Usually I would wait to, um, for, the, for the CI pipeline to pass because I don't want to uh, check all the um, like code formatting and the ESLint rules, stuff like this. This can be automatic, uh, automated. So now passed. And here we can see the, uh, the file changes. So yeah, nothing to complain here, just quickly skipping this and now we can see here what we can do now is add some com uh, comments so here for example we can see that there's a leftover class name we don't need that with uh, style components so let's add a quick comment um, please remove the uh, class name prop we can also add we can use markdown here so I'll start the review. Uh, this review comment is not yet visible to the author. Um, the review is still pending. We will finish it in a bit. And now let's see. Um, here, this looks strange. Like if this uh, pull request is called migrate to style components and not even the home page, this component has been completely migrated. So let's add another comment. Uh, why didn't you migrate this to styled components? Okay, cool. So let's leave it as, as it is now. The next step is to, um, to finish our review and we can add a comment here, um, which isn't really necessary for now because we want the author to change the pull request. We will request changes here and submit the review. So now you can see in the uh, pull request overview that uh, the conversation that the comments pop up here. And now it's time to switch back to the author's perspective. So again, like here, you can see the comments. As the author, we either can start a discussion here, like reply in a comment and uh, ask for the reason why, why they uh, ask for change. Uh, but here it's rather obvious, so let's directly adjust this uh, code. Um, so we have the class name here, let's remove it. We have a change here, and then we simply commit again to the same branch. Uh, remove unused class name prop. Okay, so now we can publish the branch again. Now you can see that uh, the commit is popping up here. And also the CI pipeline should run again. Yeah, again. Okay, so 
now we can add a nice comment, a uh, nice catch, and then make it thumbs up. Okay. And depending on the convention of your team, either you resolve the conversation or your teammate does. Let's do it here. So this is resolved. And here we could start complaining like, come on, this is really boring stuff. Okay. Now the next step, once we're done with all the conversations here, uh, we will re-request a review. This just signals our teammate that uh, we're done. It's very annoying if, uh, if you work in a team and you review code and then it changes again. So it's always good to signal to a person that uh, this is ready for review. So we again in the uh, teammates perspective. So here uh, we can actually just watch the new changes uh, since, since we last viewed the pull request. So here you can see that we just see the changes from the, from the latest commit. And we can also, again, like sometimes it's a bit easier to uh, see the whole overview. Um, So here we will just accept this. Okay, let's go on. For example. And then we can resolve the conversation. And now we can leave a comment here. Let's see, very uh, useless emoji, but yeah. Uh, and then we approve the pull request. So now again from the author's perspective, we can see here it's approved. And then we can uh, actually squash and merge. We have the different uh, options here. The create merge commit uh, is now disabled. Then we have the squash and merge. Uh, and the rebase and merge. Uh, I like to use the squash and merge option. Uh, we will see what that does in a bit, but for now we can just uh, add this. So migrate to style components and then number seven. Remember this number seven, this uh, will be very handy in a bit. And now let's click confirm squash merge. So now it's merged. And we can also delete the branch here. It's nice to keep everything tidy. So now we're back on the main branch. First again, let's check the uh, pull request. This is the pull request and we have three commits here. Now on the main branch, we don't see that. We only have this one. These are from a few days ago. And this is the only commit that uh, pops up in, in the main branch. Um, this is what squ squash merging does. It just squashes all the commits from one branch into a single commit. Um, this is, from my perspective, very handy because uh, sometimes like these feature branches, they can become very, uh, like can contain a lot of commits. And as you saw, they are also uh, when you go through a longer review process, there are a lot of comments like uh, fix this, fix that, fix review comments, uh, and you don't really need them to pop up in the in the main history. A uh, nice feature here as well, the number seven turns into the uh, a link to the pull request. So even without like a lot of context, because this is only one commit, you can still see the description uh, of the pull request. You can see all the commits and the discussions. Yeah, so as a last step, uh, not to forget, our main branch on GitHub contains now a new commit, but our uh, local repository uh, so on the local machine doesn't know about this commit yet. So one thing that we always need to do before we continue working on a new branch is check out the main branch. 
And now you can also already see your branches behind origin main by one commit. So, and now we simply pull the main branch and we have our changes here. So as you can see here, uh, this, this code changed. Okay, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you want to practice this, uh, this workflow hands-on, you can uh, go to my free course, GitHub Minesweeper. Uh, I will leave a link in the description. Uh, also, uh, if you're interested in becoming a more professional React developer, uh, I'm preparing what I call a React uh, job simulator. This basically means that uh, you will be able to work on an existing code base, just like you would uh, when you join your first job. Uh, you work with designs and implement features in this existing code base. There will be bug fixes, new features. We have a UI kit here. So this will all be documented with uh, storybooks, uh, small, simple components. Then there will be testing included. So it's, it's basically a simulation of a real job environment for React developers. Uh, this can come in handy when you just have like theoretic experience working with courses, or maybe you just uh, implemented a small toy project, but you want to step to the next uh, level with React skills. Okay, so that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed.